I want to spend a moment just trying to get a better feel for the formula, but I'm going to fall well short of deriving them. So surface integral is the formula in question, and you've already uh, seen and done some calculations where you might be finding the mass of a surface. And so this is actually our density function, and the g of xy referred to here, z equals g of xy, was the surface in question. Okay? So... We've already done the calculation. I spent a little bit of energy uh, sort of uh, talking about how, where surface area came from in an earlier section. So the parametric version of this same uh, measurement, and I call it mass even though there are definitely other ways you could use the surface integral to measure things. So that this is density, the parametric version says that our surface is the um, R of U V equals, and you're provided a vector with three components, one, two, three components. These X, Y, and Z components would replace the X, Y, and Z of our function here for density, so we would get those values from the x, y, and z here. And we already learned that for this type of problem with a double integral with three variables, you can't have that. So this is what replaces any values of z in that situation. We only care about the density on the surface itself. We only care about the density on the surface itself, not other points in space. Now, I want to show you a little comparison of the two notations here. In this version of the problem, what was done was to find a um, normal vector, we use the cross product in a previous segment. But remember, the cross product, the magnitude of the cross product also had a different purpose. So if we have this cross product, this generated a normal vector, whoops, to the surface. In a previous unit, we could manipulate this and let's say subtract g of xy to the other side of this equation, and we could call it capital G, now of three variables. And if I were to take the gradient of that capital G function, I would get a normal vector to this three-dimensional surface. Um, the x partial derivative, uh, that's zero, so it's negative g with respect to x. The y partial derivative, that's zero, so negative g with respect to y. And the z partial derivative of this is one. That will become useful, not in this segment, but soon. So this also was a normal vector. Again, I'm just trying to draw some comparisons between those two messy looking formulas there. They look so different from each other. How could they be measuring the same quantity? So what I'm trying to do is show you that there are some similarities going here. Now, the magnitude of the cross product also found the area of a parallelogram. That magnitude, R U cross product R sub V or partial with respect to V. So that was an area of a parallelogram. Well, if both of these calculations are the same normal vectors, then the magnitude of this
would be the same area as this. And that's going to be 1 plus g with respect to x squared plus g with respect to y squared. Again, not proving what I'm showing you. Just showing you that these two very different looking notations... They're quite a bit more related than they might appear if you're just staring at algebra and you're kind of numb in the brain right now. So, we'll see a calculation in the parametric form soon. So, stay tuned for that exciting episode.